A new day dawns at Glacier Creek. I'm gonna go down and see what Jason's got going. You know, maybe between the two of us, we can figure something out. With minimal goals showing in the box last night, their season goal hangs in the balance. Hey, Jason. What's up, Dave? What's going on down here? You know, Dave, you know, you look over across at that wall and you see nothing but nice river gravels, shingled. That upper five feet, it's carrying good gold, but everything below that. I mean, it's like all sand. Yeah. It's just weird. It's just not paying out. Well, it's like this across this whole cut. Well, you can see the big rocks down there at a little bit lower level. There really should be a pot of gold down here. Take a pan. Is somewhere in this big stuff? Okay. See if it gets any better on this side. clean it up a little bit, but you got one and two. I mean, that's that's top gravel gold, Dave. Which is not normal with the placer mine. Normally, any deposit, the deeper you go, or right above bedrock, that's where you end up with your best gold. Not the case here. It's all towards the surface. The only theory I can really come up with is the fact that it's a younger deposit. Nearly all gold deposits modern miners chase are hundreds of thousands of years old. Enough time for gold to collect on impenetrable bedrock. Jason's theory? The crew has now hit ground containing relatively young placer gold that hasn't had time to settle. So the deeper they mine, the less gold there is. The question is, how much gold are we going to get out of this cut? I know you said stay on the gold, but I don't think I can do it here in the Cottonwood, Dave, because this isn't going to cut it. I've got to find the glory hole, you know, or something to hit us at that 450. We can't be stopping. We're running out of days. You're right. Could I have a little time to go check around, punch well, a few holes? No. Now's not the time to go on a wild goose chase. I don't have time to open another cut. Maybe we just run the top gravels. At least it's paying the bills. I mean, we can hope, but I don't know if 450's gonna happen. With season-ending snow now just two days away, Dave faces a critical decision. You know what? Those guys are busting their butts for this. It's a really risky gamble, but there's not a gold miner on this planet that hasn't taken a risk. And that's the same way with this crew. These guys are all risk takers, so if Jason wants to go find another spot, I should let him. Maybe that'll get us over 450 ounces. Got to let him go. Hey, Jason. Jason, you got a copy? Yeah, go ahead, Dave. Go for it. Go do your prospect. Yeah! Let's roll the dice. You get over 450 ounces. It's on you, buddy. Go get it. Jason's mission? Recover 50 more ounces of gold before mining in Alaska is shut down by winter. First stop, Valdez Museum. Really, on our property, there's historic hard rock operations up above us. I need to do some research. I phoned ahead, request any mining info, maps, anything that may help me out on the ground. Hello, are you Jason? Yes, ma'am. Hopefully, that will provide you what you need. Thank you, ma'am. You have a wonderful day. Too. Jason scans for historic hard rock mines in the Glacier Creek area. Let's see where we. His plan open a new cut close to a hard rock gold source in the hope of finding more gold near to the surface. The Golden Sunlight Mine was one of hundreds of small operations opened during the far northern gold rushes. Between 1906 and 1942, mines like these contributed to hard rock gold pulled from this region, totaling 55,000 ounces. If I can get right on the mouth where that golden sunlight opens up and lays out into that drainage, might be one hell of a payday sitting there.
Jason identifies a spot where he thinks the adit or entrance to the sunlight mine was made. Tracing the drainage channel, he lands on an area of organics just beyond the cottonwood cut. Now, he must prove his theory. Over in the new sunlight cut. Listen to that. That's that money. Please be the money. I need it to be the money. See, this came right off that mountain. Some of the ore that the old timers kind of threw out. Let's run a pan of that. All right. But if I could pan 15, 20, then I found what we need. And we're in the money. That is a little bit of a fresh right out of the damn source nugget. This is genuinely out of the hard rock. 22, 24, there's like 26 colors there, man. <sighs> I don't have to go back to Dave empty handed. That's, that's 450 ounces is what that's gonna equal. Dave, you got a copy? Go ahead, Jason. I'm looking at two little nuggets that are wrapped with quartz and bedrock. What's up, Jason? The little nuggets. That's a nugget right there. A little nugget there. Yeah, but look at all the finds in there, too. There's the other one. Woo! You might have found something. We gotta get some to the plant and find out. Let me clear off some of the topsoil clear some of this brush, get a road back here. You know what, it might be our Hail Mary. Great job, Jason. Woo! He's out there hustling, he's working his ass off, make sure he's getting the best gold as he can. And I admire that. I tell you what, I'm pretty proud of that guy. He, uh, he did the research, and guess what? We found some gold. I think Jason is becoming a very good leader. He's learning and conquering and adapting. He's willing to to take those risks. If you don't have gamble in your blood, you're never gonna be able to make it as a gold miner. There's a lot against you. There's a lot that you can't control. I've learned that.